This is Audiobook Caboodle YouTube channel. Click on the subscribe button and listen unlimited audiobooks anytime, anywhere. Barks and Purrs by Colette Willey. Translated by Mary Kelly. Section 3. On the Train. Kiki the Demure, Toby Dog, she and he have taken their places in a first-class compartment. The train rolls along towards distant mountains and the freedom of summertime. Toby, on a leash, lifts an inquiring nose to the window. He has strewn the carriage with newspapers. Kiki the demure, silent and invisible in a closed basket, is under his immediate protection. She, leaning against the dusty cushions, is dreaming of the mountain she loves best, and of the low house on it, weighed down with jasmine and Virginia creeper. How fast this carriage goes! It can't be our regular coachman. I haven't seen the horses, but they smell very bad and make black smoke. Oh, silent dreamer, look at me and tell me, shall we arrive soon? No response. Toby is fidgety and blows through his nostrils. Hush! Toby, hush! I've hardly said a word. Shall we arrive soon? He turns towards his master, who is reading, and puts a discreet paw on the edge of his knee. Shh! Toby Dog resigned. Hard luck. No one wants to talk to me. I'm bored, and what's more, I don't know this carriage well enough. I'm tired out. They woke me very early this morning. I amused myself by running all over the house. They had hidden the chairs under sheets, wrapped up the lamps, rolled up the rugs. Things were white and changed and awful. There was a horrid smell of camphor everywhere. My eyes filled with water, I sneezed under the chairs and slid on the bare floor in my haste to follow the maid's white aprons. They bustled about among trunks with such unwanted zeal that I was sure something exceptional was going to happen. At the last minute, just as she came in, calling, Toby's collar and the cat's basket, quick, put the cat in his basket. Just as she was saying that, my chum disappeared. It was indescribable. He, terrible to see, swore by all the gods, and struck the floor with his cane, furious because they had allowed his Kiki to get away. She called, Kiki, at first supplicatingly, then in threatening tones, and the maids brought empty plates meant to deceive, and yellow paper from the butchers. I really thought my chum had left this world, when suddenly, there he was, perched on top of the bookcase, looking down on us with an expression of contempt in his green eyes. She put up her arms. Kiki, will you come down immediately? You're going to make us lose the train. But he didn't come down, and it made me dizzy, though I was on the ground, to see him way up there walking and turning about and mewling shrilly to tell us how impossible he found it to obey. He was about frantic and kept saying, Heavens, he's going to fall. But she smiled skeptically, went out of the room and came back armed with the whip. The whip said crack twice only. Then a miracle happened, I think because the cat leapt to the floor softer and more bouncy than our plaything, the ball of wool. I would have broken to pieces falling like that. He has been in this basket ever since. Toby goes to the basket. Ah, here's a little peak hole. I see his whiskers. They're like white needles. Whew, what eyes. He jumps back. I'm rather afraid. One can't really shut a cat up. He always manages to get out somehow. He must suffer, poor fellow. Perhaps if I speak kindly to him. He calls very politely. Cat! Kiki the demure, spitting furiously. <coughs> Toby Dog jumping back. Oh, you said a bad word. You look awful. Have you pain anywhere? Go away. I'm a martyr. Go away, I tell you, or I'll blow fire at you. Toby Dog ingenuous. But why? Why? Because you're free, because I'm in this basket, because the basket's in a foul carriage which is shaking me to pieces, and because the serenity of those two exasperates me. Would you like me to look out and tell you what one sees from the carriage window? Everything is equally odious to me. Toby Dog, having looked out, comes back. I haven't seen anything. Thanks, just the same. I mean, I haven't seen anything that's easy to describe. Some green things which pass right close to us, so close and so fast that they give one a slap in the eye. A flat field turning round and round and over there, a little pointed steeple. It's running as fast as the carriage. Another field, all red with blossoming clover, has just given me another slap in the eye, a red slap. 
The earth is sinking in. Or else we're going up. I'm not sure which. I see way off, far away, some green lawns dotted with white daisies. Perhaps they're cows. Kiki the demure with sarcasm. Or wafers, or sealing letters, or anything you like. Aren't you the least little bit amused? Kiki the demure with a sinister laugh. Ha! Ask of the damned. Of whom? Kiki the demure, more and more melodramatic, but without conviction. Of the damned in his vat of boiling oil, if anything amuses him. Mine is not physical torment. I suffer imprisonment, humiliation, darkness, neglect. The train stops. A conductor on the platform cries, All aboard! All aboard! Toby Dog bewildered. Someone's crying out! There's an accident! Let's run! He throws himself against the carriage door and scratches at it. She, half asleep. Toby, dear, you're a nuisance. Toby Dog distracted. Oh, you inexplicable person, how can you sit there quietly? Don't you hear those cries? They're stopping now. The accident has gone away. Wish I'd known. The train starts again. He, throwing down his paper. The poor beast is hungry. She, now very wide awake. You think so? Well, I am too, but Toby is to eat very little. He, anxiously. And Kiki the demure? She, peremptorily. Kiki sulks, and he hid this morning, so they'll have even less than Toby. He isn't making a sound. Aren't you afraid he's sick? No, he's simply vexed. Kiki the demure, as soon as there's a question of himself. Meow. He, tenderly and eagerly. Come, my beautiful Kiki, my imprisoned one, come. You shall have cold roast beef and some breast of chicken. He opens the prison basket, and Kiki puts forth his head, flattened on top like that of a serpent, then his long striped body cautiously and so very slowly that one begins to think it's coming out by the yard. Toby Dog, pleasantly. Ah, there you are, cat. Well now, proclaim your freedom. Kiki, without replying, smooths his ruffled fur. Proclaim your freedom, I tell you, it's the custom. Whenever a door is open, one must run, jump, twist oneself into half-circles, and cry out. One? Who's one, pray? We dogs. Kiki the demure, seated and very dignified. Would you have me bark, too? We have never followed the same rules of conduct that I know of. Toby Dog vexed. Oh, very well, I don't insist. How do you like this carriage? Kiki the demure, sniffing fastidiously. <laughs> It's frightful. However, the cushions are rather good for one's nails. He suits the action to the word. Toby Dog aside. Now if I did that... Kiki the demure continuing to scratch the upholstery. Hun! May this spongy grey cloth soothe my rage. Since morning the whole universe has been in a state of monstrous revolt. He whom I love and who venerates me made not the least effort to defend me. I've submitted to humiliating contacts, been jolted to death, piercing whistles have shot through my head from ear to ear. Ho, oh, ho, oh, how good it is to relax the nerves and to imagine that, with gleeful claws, one tears the enemy's flesh in bloody shreds. Ho, oh, ho, oh, scratch! and lift the paws on high, lift them high as possible. It's a supremely insolent gesture. I say, Kiki, when are you going to stop that? He, indulgent and admiring. Let him alone. He's doing his nails. He has spoken for me. I forgive him. But since it's allowed, I don't care any more about tearing the cushions. When will I get out of this? Not that I'm afraid. They are both there, and the dog, too, with their everyday faces. I've twinges in my stomach. He yawns. The train stops. A conductor on the platform cries, All aboard! All aboard! Toby Dog, excited. Screaming again! Another accident! Let's run! Heavens, what a tiresome dog! What does it matter to him if there is an accident? I don't believe in it, moreover. It's the cry of a man, and men cry out for the pleasure of hearing their own voices. Toby Dog, calm again. I'm hungry. 
Can't we hope to eat soon, my mistress? I don't know what time it is in this strange country, but it seems to me— Come now, we'll all have our luncheon. She takes the things out of the basket, crumples up some tissue paper, and breaks a crisp brown roll. Toby Dog, chewing. What she gave me, then, must have been very good indeed to seem such a tiny bit. It melted in my mouth. There's not even the memory of it left. Kiki the Demure, chewing. Breast of chicken. Mm. Goodness me, I was purring without knowing it. That won't do. They'll think me resigned to this journey. I must eat slowly, grim and undeceived, eat for the sole purpose of keeping myself alive. She to the dog and cat. Allow me to have my luncheon now, if you please. I, too, like cold chicken and hearts of lettuce dipped in salt. He anxiously. What shall we do to make this cat go into his basket again? I don't know. We'll see presently. Finished already? I could swallow three times that much. I say, cat, you're eating rather well for a martyr. Kiki the demure, fibbing. Trouble digs a hole in one's interior. Move away, please. I want to sleep now, if I can. Perhaps a merciful dream will take me back to the house I've left, to the flowered cushion he gave me. Home, sweet home, rugs of bright colors for the delight of my eyes, a palm with nice shoots for me to eat, deep armchairs, under which I hide my woolen ball as a future surprise for myself. Ah, and the cork hanging by a string to the door-latch, the tables covered with bibelots. I thread my way in and out among them, and occasionally it amuses me to break some brittle thing. The dining-room is a temple, the vestibule full of mystery. There, unseen, I can watch those who come and go. Oh, narrow back stairway! where the step of the milkman rings out for me like a morning angelus. Farewell, farewell. My destiny carries me on, and who knows if ever— But this is too sad. All the pretty things I've been saying have really begun to make me feel badly. He begins a minute and mournful toilet. The train stops. A conductor on the platform cries, All aboard, all aboard. There it is again, in exit. Oh, bother, I've had enough of that. He anxiously. We're going to change trains in ten minutes. How about the cat? He'll never allow us to shut him up. We'll see. Suppose we put some meat in his basket. Or perhaps petting would. They approach the redoubtable Kiki, and both speak together. Kiki, my beautiful Kiki, come jump on my knee, or on my shoulder. You like that as a rule. You'll doze there, and then I'll put you gently into the basket. After all, it's open work and has a comfortable cushion to protect you from the rough wicker. Come, my dear. Listen, Kiki. You must learn to act properly and to take life as it is. You can't stay there like that. We're going to change trains, and a horrible guard will appear and say insulting things of you and your race. Besides, you'd better obey, because if you don't, I... I'll give you a good whipping. But before she can lift her hand against his sacred fur, Kiki gets up, stretches himself, arches his back, yawns to show the rosy lining of his mouth, and then walks to the open basket where he lies down with an admirable air of quiet insolence. He and she exchange eloquent glances. End of section three. This was Audiobook Caboodle YouTube channel presentation. We hope you enjoyed listening. For full audiobook, check out our playlist section. Links in description below.